Okay, friends and felons. I think it's time we uh, check in on some of my thrift score scores. First up, this white record. It's not the white album, it's the lap Lisa's favorite song. I don't know if that's a proper Norwegian fake accent or if I said it right, but this beautiful album put out by the, the Salvation Army of Norwegian folk music. Now when, when you hear the kids say that an album slaps, this is where that came from, because boy, does this album slap. But enough about the most important music of a generation. Let's get to the main course. This thrift scored point and shoot camera, price tag $2.99. So inside this uh, stickered Scenic Airlines case is the Canon Auto Boy Zoom 105. It's an auto boy, just a boy, just a mere child, not an auto man, just an auto boy. And for a boy, oh, she's a thick one. Like, it's, this is like, this is a very fat, hefty point and shoot camera. Like, it's, this is like a Leica girth. But the fun fact about these are, when they grow up, instead of, when they become auto men, they actually get rebranded into the Canon EOS Rebel. And that's where those cameras came from. The auto boy becomes an auto man. SLR. It's kind of like back in the 80s when Jerry O'Connell was in Stand By Me and he was the big fat chunky kid and you're like, ugh, what's he gonna grow into? And then the 90s come around and it's like sliders and he's just like one freaking just cut hunk of a human and you're like, oh, that's the same story of the Canon Auto Boy Zoom. So of course the reason I'm here today with this camera is that it's yet another that I've scored with film loaded into it. Looking into the window, I can see that it is 200 ISO, 24 exposure, green, so most likely Fuji. But the thing is, I've, I've read nothing about how this camera works, so this is all just me guessing right now. It says 23 on the back, which means either this camera has shot 23 exposures and I finally got some good film, or it read in 23 and he's like, that's how many shots you get, and there's nothing in there. But the thing is, like, there's not enough battery juice to power up the camera. So we're gonna have to take some drastic actions. So normally this would be one of my mom camera range point and shoots I wouldn't care for, but because it has this one feature that's really neat, I'm gonna, I bought a battery, so we're gonna try to bring this to life and actually shoot my own film with it as well as whatever's on here. And that feature is, on the bottom, you can get all these different messages that you can apparently can embrand onto your photos, like, I heart you, thank you, happy birthday, congratulations, happy new year. So I'm excited to just try this camera with these settings and really see how they enhance my photos. So other than that, it's a pretty typical looking point and shoot. Just got your zoom in, zoom out, a viewfinder. And one, one, one other neat feature that's kind of cool is that it has a little remote built right in so you could I'm assuming so you can set it up on a tripod and then walk over to your friends and be like, Happy New Year! Click the button and take a selfie with everyone. So if this actually works when I put the battery in, that'll be something to play with. But other than that, I think we need to battery up this bad boy. So first let's let's remove the old battery. These weren't the cheapest batteries, but I figure, what the hell, might as well have one for more adventures when I score other cameras that take this form. We got replacement battery. I think I paid like eight bucks for this one. Well, it open. Oh. <laughs> ah. And now, can we bring this camera back to life? Oh, it made noise. It's making noise. So there we go, we got Number 23, no idea. Oh, 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 look at that, look at that. Ooh. The zoom is not happy on this watch. It just goes, it tries to go out and nothing happens. Hopefully I can shoot with it, let's see. Oh, 
Oh, this camera is not happy. This might thwart my plans of shooting my own film with this. Oh, that's a bummer. Well, guess the Canon Auto Boy didn't make it to adulthood. Oh, it won't even retract. Now it's flashing IE, what does that mean? Internal air? If anything, it's sample this and write some cool industrial music. Okay, so my my glorious plan of loading up some new film into this is apparently not gonna work. So I guess plan B is to uh, put this into my changing tent, rip the film out, and see what we got. This might be a short video. Okay, quick update. It's been a day or two since I filmed the first part and I finally got around to yanking the, the film out of the camera. At first I'm like, oh, if I put the battery and hit the rewind button, it'll just rewind it for me. But the camera, when I hit that button, just made this sound that it was kind of like a deer dying. So, I was like, Aah! I was not happy. But I went to the tent anyways and pulled the film out. I got a roll of Fuji Color Super, Super HQ. And the thing here is that the film was pretty much all the way wrapped around the, the other reel. So it was all out of the canister. So. If this is one of those weird cameras that unloads all the film, as you shoot, it rolls it back into the film, so if you pop open your camera, you don't lose your exposures, then I might be screwed. But if it's not, we might have my actual first success of a thrift score camera with film in it and the film having photos on it. I'm gonna run this up to my local lab tomorrow and we're gonna find out what it is. <laughs> I've got the film back. It's time to discover if we've uh, finally got some found photos. Let's, let's uh, dig in and see what happens. These are negatives for my winter walk to work I just shot a week ago. This, you can see that video here if you're on a device that shows the pop-up cards. Otherwise, hit the description. I'll have a link to it there. So let's um, grab this other roll and see what was on the auto boy. I don't need that anymore. It's... Oh, oh, I see. Some very faint images on some old... Oh, somebody went vacation somewhere. Well, looks like we finally got ourselves a winner in this adventure. You know, it took a couple tries, but sure shit, it happened. So the auto boy was a auto awesome find, because I've got some photos. Let's uh, slam these on the scanner and take a look-see at them. So before I actually scan these negatives, I just want to show as an example of what I'm dealing with for any non-photogs who don't understand how bad expired film can get. So what you're looking at here is a freshly developed, freshly processed C41 color negative. She's got the nice brownish orange hue and you can actually see the image on it. You can make out what it is if you look at it pretty easily. Contrast that to the negative that I pulled from the Auto Boy, which as you can see is very like it's very dark throughout the whole thing everything is fogged as it's aged and the the image on it is a lot more thinner and harder to see so basically the scans that this is, are going to come off this probably aren't going to look that great i'll be able to get an image no problem but they might be just gross it's why i personally don't like dealing with expired film you don't really know if you're going to get a nice fresh looking film if it's been stored properly or some crap like this if it hasn't. All right, we got one of our deep purple scanned expired film negatives up on the screen. Let's um 
by the power of Negative Lab Pro, discover what's on it. What? No. Got it. Wrong menu. There we go. Well, hello. How long have you been stuck on that film? Okay, so no Vivian Meyer-esque cache of incredible fine art photography on this roll. Just some casual snapshots of this woman who appears on every single photo on this roll of film. Except for one. So the camera was found in a thrift store near the shores of Lake Superior in northeastern Minnesota. And even though I have a YouTube channel, that doesn't suddenly make me an expert on world geography. But I am fairly certain that these waters are not the icy waters and rocky shores of Lake Superior. My initial hunch is that this was somewhere in Southeast Asia or Hawaii. So let's look at this woman again. It doesn't appear that she's using the Auto Boy selfie remote in any of these photos. And the entire set of photos really gives me like a lover's gaze vibe. So who could possibly be the lover behind the camera taking all these pictures of this woman? Perhaps it is this man posing a way that just mere friends would seldom pose. And on this photo, if we zoom in on the man's t-shirt, we see some of the text here that is nearly illegible due to the grain age of the film. But what it does say in the smaller text is Concordia Language Villages. Now, Concordia Language Villages are language immersion camps located in north central Minnesota, which explains how these photos probably ended up in my neck of the woods if that's where this guy is from. But who knows, maybe the rest of the story here is that she came over to do one of these camps, they met there, started dating, and eventually traveled back to her home country together for this vacation. But this is all guesswork and one of a thousand possible scenarios. But also not really knowing exactly what I'm looking at and wondering what the story is, is a lot of the fun I have in finding strangers photographs. So moving on, where were these photos taken if not taken in northern Minnesota? Hunting into the photographs themselves, there wasn't very much in terms of clues in the signage. Every word I could find printed somewhere in a photo was in English. And there was also this cold flag which I couldn't find a match to via some casual Google searches. But the temples they're posing against here were the next clue to figure out where these were taken. Searching again for temples of various countries in Southeast Asia turned up some images of very similar looking architecture through like Thailand and Myanmar. And pressing on trying to figure out which countries these were, I came into this photo which had the critical clue that I needed. Obviously a very unique outfit for a guard to be wearing and a search for Thailand Royal Guard rewarded me with various photographs of men in the exact same outfit guarding the Grand Palace in Bangkok. And then looking at additional photographs of other palaces in the background of these photos once I knew the Grand Palace of Bangkok existed, it's pretty obvious that is exactly where these photos were taken. So now that we have the where covered, it leaves us the last question of when were these photographs taken? I bet you're thinking, hey you dumb idiot, it says 1990 right on the photographs. I'm like, yeah, I see that. But I have my doubts. For one, when I put the batteries into the camera, the date time setting defaulted to January 1st, 1990 with these Japanese symbols next to the date. And as we can see in the photos, the dates all increment starting from January 1st, 1990. Putting a new battery in right the day before our vacation and not bothering to set the date because you don't have a pin or something to push the little buttons needed to set the time does seem like a very realistic scenario to me. And secondly, once again, having a YouTube channel does not make me a fashion expert, but the clothing just don't scream 1990 to me. Maybe a few years later, like 1995 at the earliest, perhaps? Not quite sure, but it just doesn't feel that early. And also, I'm not a car expert, but there are these two cars in this one photograph, so maybe someone out there can be like, oh yeah, that's a 1995 whatever whatever, and boom, we'll know like the earliest that these photos could have happened. But that said, these are the photographs I found on the thrift store Canon Auto Boy Zoom. I'll be sharing these photos on my social media when I release a video, so maybe someone out there will recognize the people in it if they're local to me, and they'll see them and we can get the true story of what this vacation is all about. Till next time. Yeah.